the early years. This disc shows the history of the Mansfield High Schools, but in order to talk about the increase and decrease in Mansfield's high school population, you have to understand the impact that the factories and railroads had on the local economy and the population in general. Also included on this disc are some of the related about facts Mansfield that I think you will find interesting. Mansfield's elevation gives it the distinction of being the highest city in the state of Ohio. It sits on top of a watershed between Toby's Run and Ritter's Run with good drainage into the Rocky Fork Creek. The natural springs and artesian wells were a good source of fresh water for the early settlers. Mansfield was founded and surveyed by General James Hedges in 1808. It was laid out in a grid system with a public square as the center of the community. It was named for the U.S. Surveyor General Jared Mansfield, who never set foot in the town that bore his name. In 1809, Eliza Wolfe opened the first school in a blockhouse on the square. The restored blockhouse is currently located in South Park. In the early years, the Mansfield schools were maintained by private subscription and the parents would pay the teacher an agreed amount per child. Each school operated independently and the school days were usually held in a vacant building or warehouse. This was the norm until a public school system was established in 1846. The East 4th Street School, also known as the Busnell School, was the first public school building. By the time Mansfield was incorporated as a city in 1857, the population was 5,100, and there were 925 students in the public school system. In 1862, the first high school graduating class consisted of only four women because the men were away fighting in the Civil War. By 1870, the population had grown to 8,000 and the voters of Mansfield approved the building of a new school at the corner of West 1st and Mulberry Street. The West 1st Street School, also known as the Carpenter School, was the first building to house all of the high school students under one roof and was built at the cost of $31,200. It opened in 1871 and functioned as a combined elementary and high school. It was hardly an ideal building. The rooms were too large, the lighting was poor, and there were posts in some of the rooms which obstructed the students' view. From 1870 to the early 1900s, sometimes referred to as the Gilded Age or the Industrial Revolution, was a period of great prosperity for the country, including Mansfield. Expansion of the trolley lines and railroads meant that Mansfielders were becoming much more mobile. The new prosperity and expanding population was good business for the merchants. As a result, many new stores opened in downtown Mansfield. Streetcars and horse-drawn buggies were the main modes of transportation. Also, the 1870s saw several manufacturers open their doors. They included the Altman Taylor Company, which later became Ohio Brass and produced fixtures for the trolley and railroad industry. Humphreys Manufacturing and Barnes Manufacturing both got their start producing pumps. The Eclipse Stove Company, later known as Tappan, produced and shipped stoves all over the country. The convergence of four rail lines in Mansfield made it easy for these manufacturers to ship their products throughout the country. There were two train stations in Mansfield, the B&O station located on Mulberry Street just north of 6th Street, and the Union Station located on North Diamond near Ohio Brass. The railroads were the main reason Mansfield grew from a small country village into a thriving urban center. During the industrial expansion and building boom after the Civil War, it was decided that a new courthouse and county jail were needed. The old-style Greek courthouse was too small and was looking a little old-fashioned. Mansfield needed a new building to better reflect the prosperity of a booming economy. Therefore, a new courthouse and county jail were built in 1873 on North Diamond Street across Simpson High School. From 1870 to 1890, Mansfield grew from 8,000 to 13,500 
and by 1890 the high school population was more than the West First Street School could handle. It was decided there was a need for a separate building to house only the high school students. The citizens complained that the site the school board had selected on the corner of West 4th and Bowman Street was too far from the center of town. By 1892, the opposition subsided and John Simpson High School opened its doors to a senior class of 19 students. The 11 classroom building cost $150,000 to build and was viewed as an ideal high school by the state of Ohio. Scale models were made to show other school boards who were considering building new high schools. In 1890, there were 44 saloons in Mansfield and there were three breweries in the city that supplied most of the beer consumed in these saloons. Several women's groups disapproved of the saloons and were outspoken about all of the public displays of drunkenness. In fact, Carrie Nation, a member of the Women's Christians Temperance Union, was arrested 30 times for smashing up saloons with a hatchet. As time passed, the national brands became more popular than local brands and all three breweries were closed by 1951. It was not until 44 years later that another brewery would open in Mansfield. The Wooden Pony opened as a combined restaurant and brewery in 1995 on East 4th Street. Due to a lack of local support, it too went out of business within seven years. Mansfield's newest brewery is located on North Diamond Street. The Phoenix Brewery opened its doors in April 2014. The building boom continued into the 1890s. A short distance north of Mansfield, a new prison was built in 1896. The Ohio State Reformatory was originally designed to house only 16 to 30 year old first time offenders and to teach them a trade. By prison standards, it was considered a luxury prison and locally it was sometimes referred to as the University of Another Chance. It closed in 1990 and today is open for tours. During the industrial boom from 1890 to 1920, Mansfield's population doubled from 13,500 to 27,800. The merchants downtown were benefiting from the rapid growth and the wealth and prosperity created by the factories. This meant that more Mansfielders now had more disposable income to spend on entertainment. Spending an afternoon with family and friends at Luna Amusement Park, today known as North Lake Park, became a popular activity. At the turn of the century when ragtime was coming to life, the dance hall at Luna Park was a hopping place to be. Popular dances such as the Turkey Trot, Bunny Hug, and Come Back Kid were considered to be vulgar and were banned by the mayor in 1912. The dance hall burned down and was replaced by a roller skating rink, which also burned down. The increase in population during the late 1800s resulted in the building of several new churches in the downtown area. As a result, Mansfield was sometimes referred to as the City of Churches. In 1890, there were 12 churches within two blocks of the square. Eight were located on Park Avenue between Franklin Avenue and Mulberry, and four on Mulberry between 1st and 4th Street. Four are still standing today in their original location, but most have fallen victim to the migration of churches to the suburbs. In 1895, there were two suspender companies in Mansfield, each producing 5,000 pairs per day. The Western Suspender Company was located at 63 South Diamond Street and the Ohio Suspender Company was located at the northeast corner of the square where the old Sears building stands today. By 1920, the suspender industry slowly was losing support when wearing a belt became much more fashionable for men. By 1900, there were 12 hotels downtown, which helped establish Mansfield as a great hotel town. They were located on the trolley routes, which made it easy for travel between the two train stations and the hotels. The popularity of the automobile, the development of the interstate highway system, and the growth of the motel industry resulted in all of these hotels going out of business by the mid-1900s. The interurban station at 3rd and Diamond Street made it easy for travel to the surrounding towns and cities. Eventually, the automobile replaced the interurban as the main mode of travel between these towns and cities. The interurban stopped running in 1934, and the last streetcar rolled down the streets of Mansfield in 1937. 
At the turn of the century, cigar making was one of Mansfield's major industries. There were 16 companies that employed 1,200 workers producing cigars. The largest was the American Cigar Company located at 5th and Adams Street. In the early 1900s, there were no child labor laws, so it was common for kids to skip school and make a few cents rolling cigars. This became a major obstacle for the schools. However, the industry burned out by the 1920s when cigarettes became more popular than cigars. In 1926, the John Simpson High School Marching Band won the state competition. By now, even with the new eight-classroom edition in 1922, John Simpson High School was not able to meet the demands of an increasing high school population. Over time, the handsome old structure became In 1924, history repeated itself. The school board wanted to build a new high school on West Park Boulevard, but the citizens complained it was too far from downtown. The school board argued the site was serviced by streetcars that went from downtown to the Luna Amusement Park. From there, it was only a short walk to the high school, and the streetcar company would offer a 10-ride school ticket for only 50 cents. The school board also argued that the city was expanding to the west faster than any other direction. The opposition soon subsided and the new high school was built at a cost of 1.1 million dollars. It was designed to handle 1,200 students and the doors opened in 1927 with the first graduating class totaling 211. Over the years there were several additions made to the building including a new gym, cafeteria, auto shop, music annex, and new classrooms. Harry Meehawk started the Mansfield Relays in 1927 with three schools participating. Its magnitude grew through the years drawing over 3,000 athletes from five states and Canada. In 1964 the Relays moved to Malabar High School and took on the name of its founder and today is known as the Meehawk Relays. The 10-lane track at Malabar was the first high school all-weather synthetic surface north of the Mason-Dixon line. Relay winners Jesse Owens and Harrison Dillard went on to become Olympic champions. From the 1920s through the 1950s, Mansfield was a wide-open town, was often referred to as Little Chicago. Within walking distance of the train station were several brothels and many saloons. On Friday and Saturday nights, bars were hopping and the whole downtown area was very lively. Being located between Chicago and New York made Mansfield a convenient, low-profile meeting spot for some big-name gangsters. John Dillinger even spent a few days lying low in Mansfield while on the run from the law. In 1937, Safety Town was founded by Traffic Commissioner Fred Bowles and a kindergarten teacher named Ruth Robbins. The first safety town in America was held at Prospect Park and the classes helped to teach children road safety rules while walking and riding their bikes. The idea caught on and has spread to more than 400 cities across the country. In 1952, the Mansfield Safety Town moved to Brinkerhoff School, where it is located today. In Mansfield, Safety Town is a free program funded by private donations. From the 1930s through the 1940s, Mansfield was still growing, and when World War II ended, Mansfield saw the beginning of the greatest prosperity in its history. The factories were producing at full capacity, and shopping in the downtown area was very robust. But the increase in traffic and the lack of parking space made it difficult for shoppers to shop downtown. By the mid-1950s, the shopping mall concept was gaining popularity. The West Park Shopping Center was built in 1956, and the Appleseed Shopping Center opened for business in 1958. This was the start of a slow decline in the downtown area. Because of the cheap labor in the South, the 1960s saw several manufacturers shift some of their production to the southern states. Westinghouse and Ohio Brass were among the first to start this downsizing trend. The landscape of Mansfield's industrial base was now slowly starting to change. By 1960, the baby boomer generation was starting to enter high school in large numbers. The class of 1964 had over 600 students, and the class of 1965 had blossomed to over 800 students. By now, the student population was more than the old senior high school building could handle. 
As a result, half-day sessions were adopted for the 59-60 and 60-61 school years. Juniors and seniors attended classes in the morning, while freshmen and sophomores attended classes in the afternoon. In 1960, the voters approved a levy for a second high school to be built, and the school board selected a site on West Cook Road. The name Malabar was chosen, and construction started in the summer of 1961. At a cost of $4 million, Malabar opened its doors for the 1963-64 school year, with a student population of 755. The high school on West Park Boulevard had a student population of 1,450. In the 1980s and early 1990s, Mansfield started to see a major decline in its industrial base. One by one, factories began closing their doors. They included Westinghouse, Ohio Brass, Tappan, Dominion Electric, Barnes, Mansfield Tire, Humphreys, and others. In the 1940s, Westinghouse alone employed 8,000 people, which was one-third of Mansfield's total workforce. The closing of these factories resulted in Mansfield moving away from an industrial-based economy into a more diversified service, retailing, education, and healthcare economy. By the early 1990s, Mansfield General Hospital, known today as Med Central, had over 2,000 employees on its payroll and was now the largest employer in the city. Also, the 1980s saw several downtown businesses close their doors including Reed's, O'Neill's, Sears, Kobacker's, Richmond's, the Leyland Hotel, and the Madison Theater. By now, many families had moved out of Mansfield and into the Madison, Ontario, and Lexington school districts. As a result, both Malabar and Senior High saw significant declines in student population. In 1989, Malabar High School was converted into a middle school and the high school students were transferred to the old Senior High building on West Park Boulevard. The issue of the school colors and mascot had to be settled. Some argued that the old Senior High colors of red and white and the Tiger mascot should be used while others wanted the Malabar colors of orange and browns and the Falcon mascot. A compromise was reached and it was decided to use the Malabar colors of orange and brown and the old Senior High Tiger mascot. High School By 2001, the school board determined that the old Senior High School, now 75 years old, was outdated and too expensive to maintain and operate. Analysis showed it would cost less to build a new facility with up-to-date technology than to renovate the old building. Also, expanding Malabar was ruled out for several reasons. First was the problem of what to do with the middle school students who currently occupied the building. Also, the building was now 35 years old and many of its features were already outdated. The school board selected a site on North Linden Road to build the new high school. The new state-of-the-art technology school was designed to house more than 1,800 students. It would cost $53 million to build, and the Ohio School Facilities Commission would contribute more than $29 million toward the cost. The voters gave their approval by passing a new school levy, and a groundbreaking was held in April 2001. The new senior high school opened its doors in September of 2004. Why do we spell Tigers with a Y and not an I? The 1930 Manhegan Yearbook referred to the sports teams as Tigers with an I. But in the 1931 Manhegan, Tigers was spelled with a Y. There are a few theories on why this spelling was changed, but no one knows for sure. The most common theory is that the Manhegan editor changed it to distinguish the Mansfield Tigers from arch-rival Maslin Tigers. As a result, Tigers with a Y became the accepted spelling. The 
The next day, the News Journal front page headline, printed in red, read, Tigers Rip Maslin, 16 to 12. The only other time the headline was printed in red was when World War II ended. For more than 100 years, from 1880 to 1980, Mansfield saw a period of unequaled growth in both population and wealth. The railroads brought factories, the factories produced jobs, and the jobs brought people to Mansfield. As the factories were expanding and the city was growing, so was the high school population. When the city began to lose its industrial base and population in the 1970s, the high school also started to see a decline in numbers. Like the city, the high school had to restructure itself to meet the demands of a 21st century, technology-based society and a smaller population. Today's Mansfield is not your grandfather's city, and today's senior high is not your grandfather's high school.